Hi students, I am Dr. Anandi. Welcome to my channel, Make Biology Simple. In today's video, we are going to see about the biochemistry practicals. How to face the biochemistry practicals and what are the questions expected and how to handle each test and what are the color interpretation and how to face the viva. So all these only I am going to handle in the today's video. So we will check into the video. So coming to the biochemistry, you can expect only two types, uh, sorry, three types of questions. So one is qualitative, one is qualitative. So quali when you're talking about the qualitative, there is a choice again here. You can expect either a carbohydrate analysis, carbohydrate analysis, or you can uh, expect a urine analysis, abnormal urine analysis. So these are the type of questions you can expect under the first one. Second type of question is quantitative. So quantitative means you have to assay the compound in the present in the unknown solutions. So under the quantitative also, again you, get, you can expect, uh, for example, uh, here you can expect creatinine, 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 or you can expect uh, glucose. GOD, POD method. So these are the expected uh, questions under the quantitative. And the third question is nothing but spotters. So you have to identify the spotters which is kept for you and you have to write the contents. So under the spotters you can expect five spotters. So five spotters, spotters will be there. For the five spotters you have to you have to write this five spotter contents in the questions for this. So this is what the biochemistry paper expected uh, practicals. One is qualitative, the other one is quantitative and the third question is what is. So under the qualitative you can expect a carbohydrate or urine analysis. When you are coming for the qualitative you can expect creatinine or glucose. It is an enzymatic method, uh, GOD, POD method. And coming to the third type of questions, the spotters, five spotters will be there. You have to write the, you have to identify and write the five spotters. So when you're talking about, when you're talking about qualitative, so we have to go for the systematic analysis. So you may expect a starch that is polysaccharide will be there or disaccharides will be there or a monosaccharide will be there. So whatever may be, so you have to start with the iodine. So the iodine test is the first test you have to start and that if the if it turns in the purple or blue color then you can con purple or blue color you can confirm it is a polysaccharide. So once you confirm the polysaccharide you have to go for the next test so that is hydrolysis. That is presence of starch will be there. So you have to do the Benedict's test that will be negative. So negative means you know that it is not, it's not uh, separate. So you have, you will be getting negative test. So then you have to go for the hydrolysis. Hydrolysis means you have to add the acid and heat it for some time and then go for again the third, again you have to go for the Benedict's test. So Benedict test, now you have, you have, it can expect a positive result. So positive means again you have to go for the um, Positive test, then you have to uh, finish off uh, what, are, what are the types that present in here, either a gluc mostly glucose will be there. So you have confirmed like this. Suppose if it is not, if, if it is having a negative uh, for the iodine, then you directly go for the second, uh, uh, the other systematic analysis. Is, so you have to go for the bar foods. So bar foods is nothing but it will be giving a uh, mono or di. Mono or disaccharides. So if it is mono means it will be getting um, a blue dark blue color. And if it is di means light blue color after adding this bar foods. And then if and you have to heat it. Heat it then you will get like this. So based on the color you have, can confirm either it is a mono or di. Suppose if you are getting di then you have to go for the um, other uh, analysis like say for example uh, you have to go for the ozone test ozone test so ozone test for e we have we can expect disaccharide either disaccharide either will be a um what is it, what is it uh, maltose maltose or lactose 
and finally you can have a sucrose. Again sucrose here you can say it is again a, you have to hydrolyze it. So that is the other one. But if you are going with this test you have to keep the maltose for the ozone, sorry maltose and the lactose for the ozone and confirm with the and confirm with the crystals. So this is one way of carrying for the systematic analysis. So sucrose means without um, uh, this uh, thing you can you can't get it high. You have to hydrolyze for the sucrose. So hydrolysis. So that step have to done, and then only you have to go for the ozone. Okay. So in the ozone, since sucrose is having glucose and mal uh, fructose, you have to do Selenov test. So this is a systematic way of going for the analysis. Suppose if you have it as monosaccharide, then directly you have to go for the, your monosaccharide you have expected either a glucose or a fructose. So if it is a glucose, Selenov answer will give a confirmation. How we will be getting a confirmation means it will be no uh, negative. It will be a negative. That means no cherry red color will be obtained. So that itself shows that it, it should be a glucose. Suppose if it is a fructose means for the Selenov test you will get a positive. That means you will get a cherry red color. Cherry red color. So, so based on this next you have to go for the ozone. So in the ozone both of, both of the uh, sugars will have a needle shaped crystals like this. Needle shaped crystals will be there. But for the glucose it takes 10 minutes. For the fructose it takes 5 to 8 minutes. So so, Selenov is a test we can uh, identify whether it is a glucose or a fructose. So, this is a systematic analysis. This is the way you have to proceed for the first qualitative test, systematic analysis for the carbohydrate. Carbohydrate. So, iodine will give a clue that it belongs to a polysaccharide and the barfords will give the either it's a mono or dye if it is a dye again you have to go check with the maltose lactose or sucrose sugar directly you won't get in the barfords thing so you have to go for the hydrolysis only you'll be getting so this is another step you have to proceed suppose if you don't have iodine as well as then uh, bar foods, then directly you can go for the Selenov test. So Selenov test will give the thing. And here the Benedict's will give either a positive. Positive means reducing sugar. Negative means non-reducing. So non-reducing means you know very well it is uh, the next uh, sucrose. Sucrose is not reducing. So the next thing is okay. Unknown. Unknown urine sugar. Sorry, urine analysis. Unknown urine analysis. So under the urine analysis, you can expect um, abnormal. This is abnormal. So abnormal, usually we'll have um, a sugar or you can go for the protein. So these are the possible unknown components will be given. Third one will be the blood components. And fourth will be the ketone. And the fifth will be the bile salts or the bile pigment. Bile salts or the bile pigment by pigment so mostly the examination point of view these four is commonly expected so when you go for glucose the only test you can confirm is again the benedict's benedict's test so benedict's test will give a blue a brick red color when you heat it so that shows the confirmation of sugar and you have to say what are this is very important you have to give the clinical significance so when the glucose will be excreted in the urine so that you have to give for the when you confirm the sugar and you have to go for the protein protein is just a coagulation test a coagulation test that nothing but you have to take the uh, blood sample uh, sorry the urine sample and you have to heat it so when you heat it what happened the upper portion you can have serve as a uh, treated and then that will be when you heat what happened protein gets coagulum that means it gets coagulated the lower portion is not turns to coagulum because we are not treating as a heating it so that is a confirmation of the protein and for the blood so you have to take two to three drops of benzidin benzidin and two drops of three drops of hydrogen peroxide and then add two ml of urine so immediately you can check it a, a green color and green color. So that shows the presence of blood in your 
urine sample. And this green color usually fades because it is an oxidation reduction step. It's an oxidation reduction step. So here you can see that benzidine and adesine peroxide is getting a reduction with the help of H2O2. So here the green color gets faded when it, the time goes. So that it gives a confirmation of blood. So for anything, whatever you have completed, you have to give the clinical signal. That is the main thing you have to go for. Then coming to ketone, you have to take the urine sample and to that you add um, ammonium ammonium sulfate. A spatula of the salt you have to add, mix it well and then to that add you have, then you add two drops of sodium nitroprusside. Sodium nitroprusside. Sodium nitroprusside. And then add ammonium hydroxide. Ammonium hydroxide should be added at the side of the tube at the side of the tube. So when you take the tube like this, you have to add at the side of the tubes what ammonium hydroxide so that you can see a ring will be formed at the junction of two liquids. A purple ring will be formed. A purple ring will be formed at the junction of two uh, layer. So that shows the presence of keto. And in this case, you can see that either a two, uh, any ab two abnormal urine yeah, um, components you have to find out. So that is important here. So you can either expect a sugar or protein. It's a combination or a blood or ketone. Whatever the combination is given by the examiner. So based on this you have to find out. Other than bile salts and bile pigment also sometimes it's given. But, more, but mostly these are the four um, uh, urine components. Abnormal quantities will be expected for your exam point of view. So the second set of question is quantitative analysis. So in the quantitative analysis, again, we have a choice. Either protein will be asked or either um, gluc uh, glucose will be asked or creatinine will be asked. But today's session, we'll, check, we'll, we'll see only one, two things, either glucose or creatinine. So first, we'll check it out with creatinine. So creatinine usually will be as estimated from the urine sample. Urine sample. So this for this, you have to take three test tubes three test tubes which serves as a blank standard and test. So here you have to add one ml of water in the case of blank and standard creatinine solution in standard and the urine sample in the test solution. And after that add commonly to all the test tube 0.5 ml of picric acid, picric acid and then 0.5 ml of sodium hydroxide to all the tubes. So, because this method is done by the JAPS method, so we have to mention the method also, that's very important. This in the alkaline condition, the picric acid and the creatinine reacts. So, you know, picric acid is giving yellow color, yellow color in the test tubes. Even blank also, it changes to yellow. But when you add the sodium hydroxide, after particular, that is incubation for 15 minutes at room temperature, what happened? It all changes to orange color orange color we call it as mahogany red color orange color and then they have to take the reading at 490 nanometer so this is a usual procedure by what jabs followed and for the calculation you have to write it as star, test minus blank by standard minus blank into 1.5 so why 1.5 means um, approximately we are excreting 1500 ml so that is 1.5 liters so usually it will be 8.8 to 1.2 um, grams, sorry, grams per test per day. So this is how we have to express in the case of creatinine. Suppose if you are expecting glucose, so this is an option only because some persons will have creatinine, some will have the glucose, glucose from the plasma and this is done by the GOD POD method. GOD POD method that is G for stands for the glucose oxidase POD for peroxidase so this glucose oxidase will convert the glucose to glucuronic acid and then the POD will oxidize and H, then hydrogen peroxide to peroxidase so form, forming water so that is the basic principle of this glucose uh, estimation again same way you have to take three test tubes three test tubes and one stands for the blank, other stands for standard, then stands for T. So you have to take 10 microliter of water 
and here standard glucose that is 100 milligrams per 100 ml so like that you have to take the concentration and here the plasma is also 10 microliter then immediately you have to add uh, 1 ml of GOD POD solution so it is enzymatic method and again you have to incubate for 15 minutes at the room temperature what happen you can expect a pink color pink color solution so this is what you can expect in the tube pink color this you have to take down the reading at 440 to 425 sorry 520 to 540 nanometer again this is also star test minus blank by standard minus blank into 100 will give the uh, values say for example 80 or 80 to 120 milligram per deciliter so you have to express with the unit because that carries mark you are also you have to express with the units so that is very important so you have to met, uh, refer the method here it is enzyme method or you can say god pod method and if it is creatinine means you have to mention the jaff and this is very important you have to express a unit gram per day in the case of urine sample in the case of glucose you have to write milligram per deciliter this is the unit standard unit any uh, comp uh, blood components or the uh, your biomolecules present in the human samples will be expected so this is the uh, common two questions expected for your practical point of view the other thing is you want to phase the viva so viva question basically you have to tell what you did the principle and how you found out systematically and what is the interpretation all this you have to discuss so that that you have to report to the examiner so this is how you have to phase the viva and uh, other thing is uh, spotters spotters is the common any five spotters will be kept in the lab that you have to identify and you have to write it that carries only two marks so five into two ten marks so this is a common uh, crisp and uh, uh, short way of express for how to face the practicals for the biochemistry type. So that's all in today's video. Thank you students.